Well, good morning to you that have joined us here in this building this morning. And those of you that have joined us online, we give you a warm welcome. And uh, we're so glad that you've joined us. And uh, again, you've come to worship with us here. Those that are home, you've come to worship with us there. And uh, so we are thrilled to have you. We're going to stand and uh, greet one another. And this is our graduation Sunday, and we have uh, some special things planned for our grads this morning, grade 12 and kindergarten. Would you stand? Yes, they're all around this building. We're going to sing an old hymn. And uh, let's greet one another as we wave or shake a hand, whatever you want to do. After this song, Pastor Derek is coming with some announcements. So again, let's uh, begin to worship together. And what a fellowship, what a joy divine we on the everlasting arms what a blessedness what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting arms leaning leaning safe and secure from all
my God to find? I am overwhelmed with the joy divine. Love like this sets our hearts on fire. And I am holding on to you. I am holding on to you. In the middle of the storm, I'm holding on. I am. Sing that one more time. I am. I am holding on to you. I am holding on to you. In the middle of the storm, I'm holding on. I am. This is my resurrection song. This is my hallelujah come. This is why it's to you I run. There's no space. And there's no space that His love can reach. There's no place where we can't find peace. There's no end to amazing grace. And I am In the middle of the storm, I'm holding on, I am. And I am holding on to you. I am holding on to you. In the middle of the storm, I'm holding on, I am. And in the middle of the storm, I'm holding on, I am. And in the middle of the storm, I'm holding on, I am. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Who am I that the highest would welcome? I was lost. I was lost, but he brought me Oh, his love for me. Know his love for me. Let's sing it, who the sun, who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child. He has ransomed me, His grace runs While I was a slave, while I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me. Through the sun sets free, oh, is free. My father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken, and I am who you say I am. You are for me. 
My father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Good morning. We are happy to have our graduates here this morning. As you know, they've graduated this past week. They had their ceremony here, I think, the grade 12 graduates on Wednesday or Thursday, I think. Wednesday. So we want to recognize them this morning in our service. So we have uh, a few of them. We have six kindergarten grads and three grade 12 grads. So I'm going to start with the kindergartens, and then Pastor Andy, as he said, is going to come with the grade 12s. So when I call your name, I'm going to call you individually. And when I call your name, you can come on up and stand right up here with me. Anyone see the stool here? You can come up and stand up on the stool by me so everyone can see you, okay? All right, so the first one, and we have the picture. So look for your picture up on the screen, okay? You're going to see your picture too. So the first one we have is Logan Arnold. Come on up, Logan. All right. <laughs> Logan's going to sit and stay. You want to stand up, Logan? Stand up by Pastor Tanya. Right here, look. Stand up. There we go. Can everyone see him? Maybe we should have had a higher stool. But here he is, Logan Arnold. So, Logan, I'm going to ask you a couple questions, okay? So, what was your favorite thing about kindergarten? Learning my sight words. Cool. That's a good one. Learning his sight words. I remember those from back when my kids were in kindergarten. What is something you learned in kindergarten? Is there something special that you, that you learned? No? That's okay. I bet you learned lots of things. Okay, so what do you want to be when you grow up? A police officer. A police officer. Cool. All right, we got a gift for you, okay? your Bible. There you go. Congratulations. And next we have Anna Elliott. See Anna come in with her nan? Come on up, Anna. Anna's wearing a beautiful dress this morning. Here we go. Now, Anna, what was your favorite thing about kindergarten? Can you think of anything? No. Did you learn sight words too? Yeah? So what's something you learned? Can you think of something you learned in kindergarten? Or really special memory? No? 
That's okay. I bet you learn lots, right? Just like Logan. Lots of fun things in kindergarten. So what do you want to be? I bet you can answer this. What do you want to be when you grow up? A doctor. Oops, sorry. A doctor. A doctor. Wow. We got a police officer and a doctor. So I have a gift for you now, Anna. Make sure we got the right Bible, because your name is inside. There we go. Here's your Bible, and here's your little gift, okay? Congratulations. <laughs> and next we have Julie Foster. Come on up, Julie. Julie got some new glasses. Looks so nice on her. Hi, Julie. Now, what was your favorite thing about kindergarten? Can you tell us? Favorite thing about kindergarten? Learning. Learning. That's good. Learning is good, isn't it? We all need to learn. What is something, okay, what is something you learn in kindergarten? Is there something you want to tell me you learn about? ABCs. ABCs. Do you love singing the ABCs? Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? Singing's fun. So what do you want to be when you grow up? A skating coach. A skating coach. Cool, you must love skating. All right, let's get your gift and your Bible. Here we go. Congratulations, Julie. And next we have Claire Mahaney. Come on up, Claire. Hi, Claire. Now, Claire, what was your favorite thing about kindergarten? You want to turn towards everyone right here? There we go. What was your favorite thing about kindergarten? Can you think of something? Going outside. Going outside. I like going outside too. That's a lot of fun. So is there something you learned that you want to tell us about? No? Okay. We're going to keep that back in kindergarten, right? Because now you're going to go on to grade one and learn lots more new things, right? And have a fun summer. So what do you want to be when you grow up? I bet you can answer that question. A doctor. A doctor. We have another doctor. That's awesome. Now I'm going to get your gift and your Bible. Here we go. Congratulations, Claire. And next we have Ava Mills. They're all nice and brave this morning, coming up here. It's not easy coming up here in front of everybody. So we're really proud of them for coming up front and being brave. Now, Ava, everybody's wearing pretty dresses this morning. Yes. All our kindergarten graduates. All right, so Ava, what was your favorite thing about kindergarten? Um, reading poems. Reading poems. So what is something you learned in kindergarten? Can you tell me something you learned about? Did you learn anything in science? No. no. Never learned that yet, did you? Maybe next year, hey. Yeah, but kindergarten's fun, isn't it? Yeah, lots of fun in kindergarten. So what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a teacher. A teacher. Awesome. That's cool. All right, so I got a gift for you and a Bible. Here we go. Congratulations, Ava. So we have one more this morning that was coming, but uh, his man messaged me last minute and he couldn't make it. And his name is Riley Young. So here's Riley's picture. 
and uh, we will make sure that uh, he gets his gift, this Amelia's uh, grandson. So we'll make sure that his nan takes his gift and his Bible home for him. All right. So So now we're going to move on to our grade 12 graduates, and uh, I'm going to pass it over to Pastor Andy for that. So, no further ado, we're going to ask our first grade 12 graduate to come, and that's Heidi Beeson, and she's here this morning. And uh, so we're going to ask her to come up and uh, get her, uh, receive her grad Bible and her gift. Yeah, you can give her a round of applause. Thank you very much. So let's give her another round of applause as she takes her seat. Again, we're, we're glad that our, our grade 12s were able to make it this morning. Next, we have Mr. Tyler Fudge. You can come on up, Tyler. Not one bit shy this morning. Here we go. Here's your little gift and your Bible. So again, give him a round of applause. And our last one, Emily Gillingham. Not sure if Emily's here. Nope, Emily. Okay. Okay, so we will certainly get her, her grad uh, gift and her Bible and a couple of others. And uh, just so you know, sometimes you don't know, but we do have some other graduates that attend our youth and are part of our youth group. And, uh, and I just want you to know that there's sometimes things happen and uh, you folks may never ever know and uh, because again we don't always share all these things but we are doing a grad, a little grad supper for some of the ones who couldn't be here today, some of them that attend our youth on Thursday night so we will be doing a little grad thing for them. Again some of them for whatever reason couldn't be here today and uh, Again, so we will be doing for that. So my prayer and my desire today is that you as a church, I'm going to ask Pastor Jeff, would you mind coming up and just having a prayer over our little, you know, kindergarten grads and our grade 12 grads as we transition back into a bit more worship. But our prayer as a church is that they would go on to do great things. And uh, again, God would use them each and every day of their lives. So again, one more hand of a round of applause for our kindergarten grads and our grade 12 grads today. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Andy and Pastor Tanya, for uh, arranging this this morning, making contact with the students and their parents, and uh, making all this possible. So let's put our hands together for Pastor Andy and Tanya for doing that this morning. <clears throat> There's already been reference made to the graduation that took place here on Wednesday. As Pastor Andy said, the place was full. I think I heard the number 160 grads, I believe, 160 graduates from, uh, from the high school here in Grand Falls, Windsor. And uh, when I was in the foyer on Wednesday and I saw the bulletin there, I grabbed the bulletin and on the inside there's an insert. And all the names of those graduates are on this insert. Now I'm not going to take the time to read all these this morning, uh, but we're going to pray over this list today and we're also going to pray for... Uh, our kindergarten students as they begin their journey uh, of education. They've got a lot of years ahead of them and a lot of challenges, I'm sure, and we need to pray for them. Our high school students as they go on beyond high school as to whatever they're going to do. Some of them are going to work for a year. Some of them are going to go on to places of education in September, and we need to pray God's blessing on them. So I'm going to get you to stand, and I'll lead you in a prayer. And again, won't read all these names, but as I lay hands on this list this morning, would you pray with me, along with me, as we pray for these students today? Father in heaven, we thank you this morning that we can come before you. We thank you that you're interested in every part of our lives. You see us. You know who we are. You know where we are. You know every detail of our lives. You saw us before we were born. You understand our lives. You understand and you see our circumstances today. And Father, we thank you that we can come, first of all, to celebrate you, to celebrate your goodness, your blessing, your grace. We thank you, Lord, that we have a place in Father's house today, that we have a heavenly Father who cares about us, who loves us unconditionally, who has a plan for each of our lives. You desire 
that we would know the will of God because you want to direct our paths. And this morning as we come to this graduation emphasis service, I especially pray for our students today, those who are leaving kindergarten. I pray you will keep them safe over the summer. I pray, oh God, that you will continue to lay your hands upon your hand upon their lives. Direct their paths, we pray. Keep them safe. Keep them from harm. Keep them from evil today. May there be a hedge around about them. And may your hand be upon them. We ask it in Jesus' name. We pray for our grade 12 students today, whatever plans they might have. May they know, too, that you are a God who has a plan for their lives and that they would turn to you, that they would look to you today and they would ask you to direct their paths. I pray more importantly, Lord, that you would, they would make you Lord of their lives, that Jesus would be the center of everything they do. I pray for their parents, Lord, for those parents, guardians, grandparents, those involved in invest, investing into their lives. I pray you give them wisdom and direction, and may they make the will of God the greatest ambition of their lives. We ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you this morning. Well, good morning again. So uh, this morning, I know it's graduation service, but uh, I really uh, felt upon my heart to speak to the parents this morning, maybe even grandparents. So um, the title of my message this morning, and if any parents would like to stay out and let your kids go out and you'd rather stay in, that's fine. I'd love to have all the parents here that I can. But um, the title of my message this morning is, How Does the Lord Instruct Us to Raise our children. And if you're a parent or a grandparent here this morning, maybe you can raise your hand. Parent, grandparent, planning to be a parent, keep your hands raised for a minute. Awesome. So most of you here are parents. And I know maybe not of small kids. We have some parents here of small kids. But as parents and even grandparents, we want the very best for our children. I'm sure you would agree. And each one of us has worried, haven't we, about our children. We worry about our children. And it starts right from day one. And it goes on and on in their life no matter how old they get. It never ends. If you go back to when you were expecting your first child, you probably felt nervous. You wanted to do everything right. You talk with other parents, sought advice, ask questions, a lot if you're like me. And of course, heard all the do's and the don'ts. Like, don't be afraid to let the baby cry. Have you heard that before? or don't pick them up over every little whimper. I bet you we've all heard it. I didn't follow those two very well, but I remember hearing them a lot from my mom or from my nan. I remember when I was expecting my daughter Alyssa, who is now 19, which I can't believe, I read every book that I can get my hands on. I joined a prenatal class, I asked questions, I wanted the best brand of diapers and so on. And some of those things were probably a bit silly looking back. But I wanted to do whatever I could, give her the best that I could. And as she grew, I worried about her getting hurt. I worried about her going after school and all the other things that we tend to worry about. Sound familiar? We all do the same thing, don't we, with our kids. We want our children to have the best that they possibly have. Every parent does. Now, it doesn't end there. If your mind can go back, we have to teach them so many things like talking, walking, sleeping schedules potty training, manners, kindness, preparing them for school, homework, then there's extracurricular activities. There's a whole list of those. There's swimming, ballet, hockey, voice lessons, karate, gymnastics, and the list goes on and on and on and on. It's kind of exhausting. And for the record, my kids weren't in all those things. But today I want to share with you how this book, God's Word to Us, instructs us how to raise our children. It doesn't tell us about the best diapers or what we should do when our child wakes up during the night, like mine still does at four years old. Potty training doesn't tell us about hockey or ballet or homework or even how to be an A-plus student. But it does give us the most important instructions as to what the Lord requires of, of us as we endeavor to raise our children and have an impact even on our grandchildren's lives and children that we come in contact with even. And may I assure you this morning that this book is a book of pure love and everything within its pages is for our good and for the good of our children. 
He loves each one of us and desires a close back with us. So my text this morning is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 9, very familiar, I'm sure, to most of us this morning. And it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength, this greatest commandment. These commandments I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. God gave these instructions to his people, the Israelites, as they were redeemed from captivity and bandage that they had been under in Egypt. And we all know this story because of Pharaoh. The same instructions are still relevant today for us. They still apply to everyone. God provided redemption for us all, freed us from the bandage of sin when he sent his son Jesus to take our place and become the punishment for our sins upon an old rugged cross. His blood was shed to cover our sins and salvation was made available through his death and resurrection. So I have three points that I wanna bring out with you this morning and I'll try to get through them quickly. The first one is go back to where we came from. Go back to where we came from. Deuteronomy chapter six, verses 10 to 12 says, when the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. God's people, the Israelites, have been living in Egypt for 400 plus years and they were crying out to God for deliverance and we know that God heard their cry. In the portion of scripture that I just read, God had already provided a way out, delivered for them from the bondage of their enemy and they were now redeemed and brought under the blessings of the Lord. God had done wonderful things for them, but in this passage of scripture, God was reminding them and warning them when they came to the place where they had everything that they needed and were content and busy going about their lives to not forget what he had done for them, what he had brought them out of, to not forget everything they had was because of God. We can't forget this morning what the Lord has done for us, what was accomplished through his death and resurrection that brought hope to all of humanity. We can't forget where we came from and what we have been brought out of because of Jesus. 1 Peter 1, 18 to 20 says, for as much as you know that you were not, as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus, as a lamb without blemish or without spot, who was ordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. As we read the whole story of how God delivered the Israelites from Egypt is a foreshadowing of Jesus, the one who would deliver all mankind from the curse of bondage and sin. Had it not been for the great plan of salvation for all humanity, we would be lost for eternity and there would be no hope for us or our children. And that's the truth and reality this morning. Sometimes we need to go back and ponder and be reminded of where we came from and the price that was paid for our sin. And our children need to know this more than anything. Sometimes we need to ask Jesus to bring us back to the cross. When we first received him as Lord and Savior and regained that fresh appreciation for our salvation and who we are in him and the blessings that we have in him. The words of the, this beautiful hymn came to mind. O precious sight, my Savior stands, dying for me with outstretched hands. O precious sight, I love to gaze, remembering salvation's days. Though my eyes linger on this scene, may passing time and years not steal the power of its mystery. May I never lose the wonder, the wonder of the cross, like I've seen it for the first time, standing as a sinner last. And on by mercy and left speechless, watching wide-eyed at the cast, may I never lose the wonder, the wonder of the cross. 
And I have to tell you, I pray that so many times. This was something that when I pray, I pray that song. May I never lose the wonder of the cross and what Jesus has done for me and for us. As we ponder over these words, let us be reminded of the great cast for our salvation. When we have Jesus, we have more than all the pleasures this world can offer. And no matter what comes our way, nothing can take that from us, our salvation. And as we live with a heart full of joy and gratitude unto the Lord and understand what he has done, who he is, and what he has brought us from, it will reflect off of our lives into the life, lives of our children. And there's nothing better than that. It will cause you to do just as verse 7 says. You will teach your children diligently about the Lord. You will talk of him when you sit in your house, when you're walking, when you're lying down, when you rise up. It will be the center of your home and your life. It's being intentional about teaching our children and showing them. Not only will it reflect to your children, but it will reflect in your marriage, in your family, and in your community. Secondly, draw close to the Lord. The Lord desires that we walk closely with him. From the beginning, it was God's plan to have a close relationship with his creation, with all of mankind. Adam and Eve walked and talked with God, as we know, in the garden. And we know from the story about the fall in the garden how sin separated man from a holy and just God. But God had a plan already in place to send his son Jesus when the time was right to bridge the gap so that we could walk closely with him again. I seen it illustrated last week in a kid's, uh, a kid's program as a, a, a pastor was telling a story and she laid the cross out across the floor and she got all the boys and girls to come up and walk across the cross and she was talking about bridging the gap. And every kid, I, I, I wish everyone could have seen it because it was a beautiful sight and a beautiful illustration. And she talked to the kids about how uh, as the kids were crossing over the cross, walking across the cross, and she told the kids how we were over here and Jesus was over there and how our sins separated us from God because he's holy and he's right and, and he's just and how God wanted a relationship with us so bad. And, and it, she just talked about how the cross was like a bridge to bring us back to a relationship with God that had been lost. And to see those little boys and girls just walking happily across that cross and realizing they knew that they were walking across that cross and it was bringing them to Jesus. And they knew that that's what it was. It was the cross that brought them close to Jesus. And that's the way it is this morning. He bridged the gap. And we can draw near to God in confidence because of the blood Jesus shed to cover our sins. There are many references in Scripture that speak of the Lord calling us to draw near to him. James 4 and 8, for example, says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. He's always there always desiring to walk closely with his children, but we have to do our part. He desires relationship, because that's what it's all about, a relationship with Jesus. I had the discussion with my daughter several times and talking about relationship and explaining to her the importance of spending time with the Lord. And I referred to relationships we have with other people. And we can't have a relationship with someone if we're not in conversation with them, if we don't talk to them and spend time with them. And so it is with God. If we choose not to talk to him or spend time with him in prayer, spend time in silence and listening to his voice and spending time in his presence, how is that a relationship this morning? But relationship requires conversation. It requires spending time. And as we spend time with Jesus, we become more like him, and there is always deeper that we can go in our relationship with him, always deeper. There is no limit this morning. There are two things that are vital to our relationship with the Lord, and you might, not, you might know what I'm going to say, and that's prayer and the Word of God, reading and studying the Word of God. I remember my uncle, it's, almost, it's embedded in my mind, and he always said to me, he used to always say to us, actually me and Andy, he was our mentor, and he always used to go, prayer and the Word, prayer and the word and that's where it comes from it's vital to our relationship with the Lord and if we're going to have an impact on our children and our families and our community and as we uh, as we make prayer and reading the word of God a necessity in our lives it changes us to be more like him as I said spending time in his presence humbles us he molds us shapes us by his Holy Spirit as we submit to him and allow his will to be accomplished in our lives allow him to work in us 
and the fruit of the Spirit will then be evident in our lives. And we know the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, faithfulness, self-control, meekness. Isn't that what we want our children to see in our lives? Isn't that what we want our families to see and our community to see? The fruit of the Spirit. It only truly comes as we live by the Spirit. It is a disciplined life, but well worth it. There is nothing to gain, nothing, everything to gain, but nothing to lose. I can assure you of that. God's word teaches, instructs, and corrects us. We gain wisdom and knowledge, understanding, and so much more. 2 Timothy 3 and 16 tells us that all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and instructing in righteousness. We live in a society where our children and even as adults constantly hearing, aren't we, and seeing and watching, learning so many different things. More than ever before, because of the advance in technology and the easy access to everything coming from all angles. And you can picture that this morning with me. And although there is good, don't get me wrong, there is so much out there that can cause confusion. But God is not the author of confusion. His word is clear and it is truth. He is truth. And his word is without error. And when we base our beliefs upon the written word of God and follow his word, live by his word, I tell you this morning that we are headed in the right direction for ourselves and for our children and our grandchildren. Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there is a way that seems right to man, but in the end, it leads to destruction. We need to know and understand what his word says more than, more than ever and hide it in our hearts and let God by his Holy Spirit be our guide. And I really feel that this morning. This verse just came to me after I was finished, this message. And uh, the verse, and I'll say it over again from Proverbs 14, 14 and 12, and it says, there is a way that seems right unto man, but in the end it leads to destruction. And we have been called to follow the word of God this morning, and we need to know it and understand it and study it and let the spirit of the living God guide us and lead us in this generation, no matter who we are, no matter how old we are, and hide it in our hearts and let God by his Holy Spirit be our guide. And I truly feel that and believe that this morning more than ever. I I actually said it to the kids last week when I was out in in kids' church. I was just telling them how we need the heart to hide God's word in our hearts, hide it there, hold it there, because we need to know it so much. My third and last point this morning is tell it, teach it, be the godly example. Deuteronomy 6, 20 to 25 if you're following along this morning. It says, in the future, when your son asks you, what is the meaning of the stipulations, decrees, and laws the Lord our God has commanded you? Tell them, we were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Before our eyes, the Lord sent signs and wonders, great and terrible, on Egypt and Pharaoh and his his whole household. But he brought us out from there to bring us in and give us the land he promised an oath to our ancestors. The Lord commanded us to obey all those decrees and to fear the Lord our God so that we might always prosper and be kept alive as is the case today. And if we are careful to obey all this law before the Lord our God as he has commanded us, that will be our righteousness. In these verses, the Israelites were given instructions to tell their children of the bondage they were in Egypt and all that the Lord had done for them. God has not changed, his word has not changed, his faithfulness has not changed and we have proven that in our lives. We can tell our children about the Lord, we can tell them of what he has done for us and for others, we can tell them of our past experiences and all about the goodness of God. How will they know if we do not tell them? The psalmist said, I will tell of all your wonderful works. I will tell of your goodness. All day long I will speak of your salvation, though it is more than I can understand. We don't always have to wait until we fully understand, understand things because that may never come. Again in Deuteronomy chapter 6, Moses says to the people, Now these things which the Lord your God told me to teach you was that you might do them. 
Not only do we tell them, but we teach and we train them. Proverbs 22 and 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I bet we can all repeat that one this morning off by heart. As parents, our home should be and is intended to be the primary source and place where our children are taught the word of God. And this morning I say all this in love. You know, there are so many things out there that we can put our time and our energy and money into for our children. But first and foremost, I encourage you to be intentional about putting the time and effort into teaching them the ways of the Lord, reading them Bible stories or verses, doing devotions that are on their level, encouraging them to pray and read and seek God for themselves. This will have eternal value and it will help them grow into the men and the women that God so desires them to be. I have a passionate heart about this this morning. Remember that they have been entrusted to us by God. They are blessings to us and we are entrusted to raise them in his ways. The choice is up to us as individuals, as parents, how we will raise our children. Andy Stanley said these words, he said, your greatest contribution to the kingdom of God might not be something you do, but someone you raise, unquote. Their eternal souls are what matters the most. At the end of the day, the gospel is what will make the difference in my life, in your life, and in your child's life. There's a real enemy out there that does not want our children to know or live for Jesus. And he will try what he can, use what he can to do it. And I don't say that to scare, scare you. It's the raw truth and it's a reality this morning, isn't it? We need to get passionate and fervent about our children knowing Christ. And I mean truly knowing him. And finally, setting the right example. How do we do that? By living according to God's word. The book of James tells us to not just be hearers of the word, but doers. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. Last Sunday, our boys and girls memorized verses for Father's Day. And Matthew memorized the verse from Ephesians 5 and 1 that says, Be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. And you know what? He was, I'm an emotional person, so I get, when I think about kids doing anything or, or speaking or getting the word of God into them. It just, it, it do truly excite me. And he was going around all week saying that. And I picked out another verse and I said, we're going to learn another one now. But it said, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and a fragrance to God. That's the rest of that verse in Ephesians. And I pondered over that part that says, be imitators of God as dear children. I couldn't think of a better illustration this morning. We know that children imitate their parents, don't they? Imitate others, but they imitate their parents. They look up to mom and dad. They look up to nan and pop. They watch us and they pay attention to everything that we do and they copy what we do, whether good or even bad sometimes. We are their greatest teachers, and we set an example by the way we live, by the things we do, by the things we say. They know what is most important to us. They are watching, and they are listening to how we respond and how we handle things, how we talk to and about others. I got a screen there. I want to, uh, something I've seen this week on Facebook, and it really, really stood out to me. And it says, our kids are watching to see if we really believe what we say, they're looking to see what it means to love or show kindness, what it means to forgive, and what it means to have faith in something bigger than ourselves. And I thought that was really nice as I read that this week. So Ephesians tells us to be imitators of God as dear children. And Paul said it again in the book of Corinthians. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. May our children see our love for the Lord and for others. Let them see that our relationship with the Lord is the most important and valued thing to us. He wants to be the center of our home and all that we do and all that we are. They need to see Jesus in us more than anything. They need to know Jesus for themselves and they need to know how much they are loved unconditionally. 
and I'm gonna ask the worship team to come back this morning. And as I conclude, I'll be the first to say that there are many, many challenges along the way, and I'm sure you would agree to that. We're all human. We all fail. We all make mistakes. I don't get up here by no means this morning pretending to be the perfect parent because I'm far from it. Sometimes our patience can be tested. Anyone have their patience tested before? (laughs) I did. Whether our kids are young or old, I think that can happen. To be transparent, there are times that I felt like I failed. There are times that I felt like I could have done better. Times when I've made wrong choices and wished that I could go back and change them. But we know that that's not possible. Sometimes I tell, well, Andy knows this. Our house is like a funny farm. I say that lots of times. You feel like tearing your hair out of your head and run away. But that's what it's like when you have kids. But through it all, God is so faithful. I remember I decided I'm going back now 19 years ago. I remember when I had Alyssa, when I first found out I was having Alyssa. I remember praying over a life and I promised the Lord, I made a promise to the Lord that I would raise her to know him. If nothing else, I would raise her to know the Lord, know the ways of God and serve him. And above everything else that I've ever taught her or showed her, that is the most important, important thing that I ever could have gave her. As I already uh, said this morning, we have a great responsibility to raise our children in the ways of the Lord, to love them and nurture them and instruct them. And at the end of the day, their knowledge of God's word, who he is, and a relationship with Jesus is what will matter the most. We owe it to our children. We truly do. And I believe that if we adhere to what God has instructed us to do, it will be evident in our home and outside the home. You might be here this morning, you might not know Jesus. You might not know what it is to have a relationship with him. Or you might be away from the Lord. But I want to tell you this morning, he's here with open arms. You might be thinking, I want to raise my child like this. You can make that decision right here where you are. It's just a simple prayer. Lord, forgive me. Lord, come into my heart. Lord, change me. I want to serve you. I want to live for you. That's all. It's a heart. It's a change of heart to serve the Lord. I'm going to ask you all to stand with me this morning. And I'm going to pray before we sing the song, Lord, I need you. And I feel that this morning just, just as much as I ever did, Lord, I need you. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here I find my rest. Because without you, I'd fall apart. You're the one and he is the one this morning that will guide our hearts. We can't let the world guide us, but we need to let Jesus guide our hearts through his word and by his spirit this morning as we have an impact on our our grandchildren and our children. So let's bow our heads this morning and, and pray along with me. Pray over your grandchildren. Pray over your children this morning. Pray that the Lord would help you to be the best parent you can be, to have a great impact on their lives because it is the gospel that is gonna impact their lives. And it's the word of God that's not gonna return void once the word of God and the seeds are sown in their young hearts, the truth of the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we bow humbly in your presence today. I thank you, Lord, for who you are. I thank you for your presence in this place. You are wonderful this morning. You are worthy. And Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you this morning because it is life-giving, life-changing. It is the truth, and you are the way and the truth and the life. And God, I pray for every parent that is here this morning, maybe the parent that is listening online this morning. I pray, God, that you would just help us to realize the importance of raising our children to know you in all your ways, in the busyness of life. And we know we live in challenging days and we live in a busy and fast-paced world. But God, I just pray that we would stop and realize that the number one thing in their lives, the lives of our children and grandchildren, is to teach them your ways, to be the example, to tell them, to teach them, to go back to where we came from, to tell them what you have done, what you have done in the past, and your plans for the future. As we know this morning that our hope is found in you. We know there's a day when you're returning for your church. And may we get ready for that day. May we be the church. May we be the people that you have called us to be. To love as never before. To love unconditionally. To do our part for the kingdom of God. 
Father, I ask this in your name today. I pray for every individual here for your blessing upon every individual, upon every home, your protection. As summer is upon us and people will travel, Lord, and, and, and go, Lord, their, their separate ways, Lord, and just spend time with family. I just pray that you will be round about each one, strengthen each one and draw us closer, draw us near, oh God, to the cross today, to your precious bleeding side. We just ask these things in your name, Lord, to go before us. I pray for every need that is represented here this morning, Lord. You know the needs, Lord, on our list today, Lord, every name, Lord. I pray that you will minister to each one this morning. The one that is, the Lord needs healing this morning. The one in the hospital bed this morning. You see them where they are and I just pray that you will go and you will meet them in that hospital room, Lord, in their home this morning, wherever they find themselves. I just pray they would sense your presence round about them. They would sense your healing touch upon their bodies and you'll be round about them and strengthen them and uphold them, oh God, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name, I give you thanks and praise today and ask all these things in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Sing that again, Lord, I need you. My 